So to me, there are sort of three elements to operating, at, operating quickly at cloud scale. Um, first is sort of organization. We've talked a little bit about that. Um, next, I think, is the technology. Um, and then third is the process. And, I, and it's, it's obvious, but I think worth making explicit that you sort of need all of those things to work well together, all three of those pillars to kind of uh, hold up the overall edifice. Um, and uh, you know, if you don't have one of them, the whole thing's not gonna work. Um, so I'd start first, I think, with, uh, with organization. So uh, I'd like to first talk about what I call service teams. Uh, then I'll talk a little bit about the ideas of DevOps. And then finally, um, some thoughts on accountability and, and uh, autonomy and accountability among those teams. Great. So uh, first up is the idea of service teams. We've talked a little bit of, about that uh, yesterday. Um, in my experience, the only way really to make teams really successful is to make them small and focused, right? So Amazon has this idea of the two pizza team, where you should never have a team that's larger than that can be fed by two large pizzas. Um, and so you have a team that's focused on building a single service or a single set of related services. And that team has a minimal, well-defined interface. And that could be a service interface technologically or a sort of responsibility interface to the rest of the company. Um, and then uh, it's useful to have sort of semi-formalized vendor-customer relationships between those individual teams. Andy yesterday had a, gr uh, had a great word for this, which he called a matrix of services, right? So a bunch of different groups of services in your organization overall that kind of interact. Um, and then I think it's well worth noting that having a clear contract between those teams is helpful. And you know, the obvious part of the contract is, of course, functionality, right? If I'm a service team, what kind of functionality am I going to provide to you? Uh, and what's my sort of scope of responsibility? But second and equally important is sort of service levels and performance, right? If I'm going to rely on you as a service team, you know, what, what SLA can I, uh, can I expect? What performance can I expect? What, uh, what throughput can I expect? Um, and this is something that we've, that we've seen at lots of successful organizations, including Google and Amazon and Netflix. Great. Um, so a very related concept, which we've touched on as well, is the concept of DevOps, right? And so uh, the philosophy here, obviously, is that development and operational responsibilities need, need to go hand in hand. And, you know, Werner Fogels of Amazon likes to say, you know, you build it, you run it. And that's a wonderful discipline. Uh, it, you know, somebody gave the cell metaphor the other day, right? It makes the cell of that service team a completely impermeable unit. It's self-sufficient and able to, uh, able to be, uh, do what it does uh, all by itself. And then also, equally, equally importantly, I think, is that it makes everybody's incentives completely aligned, right? So the developers and the quality folks and the operations people, whether they're the same people or different individual people with different skill sets, are all motivated to have resilient behavior for the service, solid instrumentation, and reliable monitoring, right? And so the end result is that you have an organizational structure where people are incented to solve problems rather than blaming and pointing fingers. And I'll give the example of services at Google. Um, so all engineering groups, more or less, at Google are organized into services. And many, many things that you've heard of in the consumer space we call services at Google. So Gmail, Google App Engine, which I worked on. Um, and then things that aren't externally exposed, like the big table service. And this, um, this sort of stack here is just an example of how services at Google might be layered. Um, so the, the top one is the cloud data store, which is the NoSQL service that's offered through the Google Cloud Platform, which is layered on no less than five different other services, right? So it's directly layered on a service called Megastore, which is layered on a service called Bigtable, which is layered on a service called Colossus, which is layered on a broad cluster manager that runs everything at Google. Um, and the details aren't important, but the idea there is each of those layers in that service hierarchy is adding a new unique piece of, of functionality, and that team that's responsible for that is wholly responsible for the building, the quality, the operations, the performance of that service. Um, each of these service teams is self-sufficient and autonomous, right? So they each have their own uh, agendas, for good or for ill, um, and each of them, you know, sort of has its own has its own roadmap, but also has its own responsibilities to its customers. Um, and they're, as I mentioned, they're layered on one another, right? So 
Uh, Bigtable is used by almost every service, other service at Google. Megastore is used by the cloud data store, but also the Google apps. Um, so all these layers um, are leveraged typically by more than, one, uh, more than one customer. And what that means is that very, very, very small teams are able to achieve really, really amazing things. So to take one example, the team that in Google App Engine that's responsible for the cloud data store is like eight people. That's it. How is that even possible? It's possible because they stand on the shoulders of giants, all these different layers. And the layer below, Megastore, is six people. That's everything. That's like development, operations, quality. In fact, they're all engineers because they've instrumented everything so well, uh, they sleep at night and they just sort of transfer the pager around day to day. Awesome, awesome stuff. Great. Um, a related notion w without which this doesn't work at all is this concept of autonomy and accountability, right? So if you give teams autonomy, uh, they're gonna be able to do great things. And what, what do I mean by autonomy? I mean the freedom to choose their technology, their methodology, and their working environment within that cell, right? Within that sort of service boundary. But also, equally importantly, the responsibility for the results of those choices, right? So you have both uh, autonomy and accountability. Um, and most importantly, as an organization, and particularly as leaders, we want to hold, hold teams accountable for the results, right? Um, and what I found most important is giving, team, giving a team a goal rather than a solution, right? This is your goal. This is the metric that you need to move. This is the business result that you need to achieve. And let the team own the best way to achieve that goal. That's the best way to drive people's creativity and innovation and, and motivation. So the example I'll give is uh, from my most recent company, uh, the gaming company, KixEye. And uh, KixEye was moving um, toward a microservices architecture similar to what we've been talking about. And what we noticed is that it was difficult to build new services, right? It was a challenge. It would take multiple weeks to kind of build and roll out a new one. So we kind of got ourselves in a room and brainstormed a la, we didn't, wasn't quite a Thunderdome situation, but we did get all the stakeholders together and talk about uh, with a whiteboard, you know, what are the things that were holding us back and how can we move forward? And we ultimately came out of that with the realization that we needed what we called a chassis, right? So people are familiar with that term. In the auto industry, you have a chassis of a car. And, um, and most, most car companies build a small number of chassis, right? You'll have an SUV chassis and a, you know, uh, sedan, you know, large sedan, small sedan, a relatively small number of chassis, but a relatively large number of bodies of cars, models that are built on the same chassis. So that's the, that's the, the metaphor here is that we wanted one chassis that we would build multiple services on top of. Great. Um, so we don't have a lot of resources and we don't have a lot of time, which actually can often be a good thing. So uh, I gave this team pretty minimal resources and pretty minimal direction. So there were three people, very smart people, but three people, and they had one month. And I suggested, really suggested, not directed, suggested, hey, there's a lot of great work that Netflix is doing in their open source projects. Why don't you take a look at that? So this team exceeded my expectations in a way that no other team, almost any other, no other team in my uh, 25 years has done. So they not only developed the chassis that I was talking about, they also developed a transport layer which supported HTTP and web sockets. So you know, two very different models of uh, communication, a service template for building new services to make it really easy, a whole build pipeline. So you know, you kind of press a button and it all builds, all builds and deploys magically. Um, and then leverage the Netflix concept of red-black deployment. So you've got version one and version, you want to spin up version two of a service. You spin up the whole thing next to it and kind of flip the load balancer. And so what we ended up with is a capability of going in 15 minutes from no code at all to a running service in Amazon Web Services um, with all these things that this team built. Um, and we were so excited by, uh, by the work that this team had done. And basically it was an assembly, I mean they did work of themselves, but they assembled and put together a bunch of these Netflix open source projects um, that we open sourced that combination. So you can check out our GitHub page um, for this work because it's really, really exciting. It's made our, our, our team super productive.